Exodus 12 19 7 days shall there be no leaven found in your houses, for whosoever eateth that which is leaven, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger, or born in the land. We see that the Feast of Unleavened Bread began on the day before Passover and continued for seven, seven, days, from the 14th of Nisan to the 21st of Nisan. Seven, seven, in Hebrew represents completeness, wholeness, blessing, and rest. The Feast of Unleavened Bread is all about entering into God's blessing and rest. Unleavened Bread represents Jesus Christ, or the Word of God. Matthew 26 26 And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and blessed it, and brake it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Jesus Christ, the Word of God, is the source of our life, spiritual growth, nourishment, and prosperity. We cannot become mature Christians if we do not spend time reading and meditating on God's Word. We need to study God's Word every day. There is nothing more important than God's Word. We cannot escape from the Babylonian system unless our spiritual eyes are opened by the Word. There is nobody and nothing who can, or who should, be your intermediator with God except Jesus Christ. Most of what passes for the church today is seriously abnormal. I dare to say that much of what calls itself the Christian church is not Christian at all except in name only. I think it will be helpful if we understand how the Babylonian religious system was organized. The Babylonian religious system was simply a multitude of organized systems that catered to the lusts of the flesh, for a price. Each god or goddess promised help in different areas of life with many different pathways, or methods, to accomplish a multitude of ever-shifting goals and purposes. Does it make you think about the hundreds, and thousands, of different Christian denominations that each pass themselves off as the church? How about the hundreds of national governments in the world? How about the hundreds of thousands of corporations and organizations in the world? The Babylonian system always had a priestly class, an ecclesiastical group of men and women, who intercede between the laity and their god. Oftentimes these priests and priestesses were prostitutes. Their entire life was dedicated to earning money for, and increasing the prestige of some god, demon. Oftentimes this priestly class had no choice in the matter. They were sold into bondage to some demonic organization at an early age by their parents. Deuteronomy 23 17 There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Deuteronomy 23 18 Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore, or the price of a dog, into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow, for even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Deuteronomy 23 19 Thou shalt not lend upon usury to thy brother, usury of money, usury of victuals, usury of anything that is lent upon usury. Deuteronomy 23 20 Unto a stranger thou mayest lend upon usury, but unto thy brother thou shalt not lend upon usury, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all that thou settest thine hand to in the land whither thou goest to possess it. Whore, a female devotee, prostitute, harlot, or sodomite, a quasi-sacred person, that is, a male devotee, by prostitution, to licentious idolatry, sodomite, unclean. The root Hebrew word for both whore and sodomite, Kadash, simply means somebody who has been dedicated to serve, as a devotee, some pagan god, demon. Kadash, a primitive root, to be clean, ceremonially or morally, appoint, bid, consecrate, dedicate, defile, hallow, be holy, keep, prepare, proclaim, purify, sanctify. Actually, Kadash was a good word if you were dedicated to Jehovah, but it was an extremely bad word if your life was dedicated to some ungodly, demonic, organization or system. We also see that lending at usury, interest on a loan, was associated with these demonic organizations. These demonic institutions often had a large surplus after all their expenses were paid and they usually would lend their surplus revenue at interest. These ancient Babylonian temples were the first banking houses on the planet. Guess what? These demonic institutions still exist with different modern names, but under the same demonic management. You do not have to strain your mind in order to identify these modern organizations. I'll make a very short list, IBM, Microsoft, PepsiCo, Disney, Levi Strauss, Citibank, JP Morgan, Facebook, Boeing, Ford, USA, France, the Catholic Church, the Lutheran Church, the Red Cross, the Salvation Army Arizona, Florida, Macon County, Franklin County, New York, London, etc., etc., etc. These are just a few Babylonian organizations I quickly came up with from the top of my head. Hold on, you might say, I need a job, I need to work for somebody. I know that is what people brainwashed by the Babylonian system will tell you. I would have told you that just a few years ago. Do we really need a job? 
Maybe we should all start thinking outside of the Babylonian system box. Maybe we all should start relying on God as our provider instead of some Babylonian institution. Did Bill Gates ever have a job? How about Mark Zuckerberg? As far as I know, they both dropped out of college and they were both multi-billionaires before they reached the age of 30. I don't know for sure, maybe they both flipped burgers in high school, but I am just saying, maybe we really don't need a job. If you did not attend an Ivy League university, if you were not enrolled in the right prep school, if you were not born in the right family, if you do not belong to the right exclusive clubs, think tanks, associations, councils, forums, etc., etc. You have very little chance of advancing very far in any Babylonian institution. As long as you are relying on a Babylonian institution, you have very little chance of advancing very far in Jesus Christ. Matthew 16 11, How is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Matthew 16 12 Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. I think it is pretty clear in the New Testament that unleavened bread represents Jesus Christ. What exactly is leaven? Modern day Babylonian teachers will tell you that leaven is sin. Jesus said leaven was the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. What exactly was the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees? I think Jesus was pretty clear about what the Pharisees were all about in the book of Matthew, chapter 23. Matthew 23 12 And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Matthew 23 13 But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Matthew 23 14 Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer, therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Matthew 23 15 Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. There is a lot more condemnation from Jesus than these few verses but I think that the Apostle John puts it most succinctly. John 12 42 Nevertheless among the chief rulers also many believed on it, but because of the Pharisees they did not confess it, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. John 12 43 For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. Wow! There were people who heard Jesus speak, saw him perform miracles, and actually believed he was the Messiah, and were afraid to openly confess him because they would rather be admired and praised by men rather than receive praise from God. Talk about messed up priorities. So what was the root of their problem? Their self-esteem, their finances, their happiness, etc., etc., were reliant on something or someone other than God. Let me ask some questions. Do you hide that you are a Christian because you might lose your job, or lose your friends, or lose your membership in the country club, or lose your business, or lose a relationship with some members of your family? Then I think you are going to have some hard times, and have to make some hard decisions in the near future. I believe that during the Feast of Unleavened Bread, it is a good idea for us to spend seven days, the week of Passover, and examine ourselves. Do we really trust God to provide for us and our family, or are we too reliant on the world's Babylonian system to openly confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior? I think it would be better to establish where we stand with Jesus Christ before we are faced with the choice of a fiery furnace, losing our head, or taking the mark of the beast. If you find this channel helpful, please subscribe. Thank you.